In this presentation, we're going to look at carrying up the prospective fault current at the origin of the installation. So come to the mains end where we've got the metering equipment and the consumer's unit, and we're going to measure the maximum amount of fault current that could flow if there was a fault in this part of the installation. Earth fault loop impedances are carried out at the furthest point of radial circuits, the midpoint of ring final circuits, to work out if there would be enough fault current at that position in order to operate an overcurrent protection device. But this is to see if it can handle a fault current of its highest value. Therefore, the prospective fault current measurement will be done within the consumer's unit itself. So this test is going to prove whether our overcurrent protection device at the origin, so the incoming cutout fuse, and individual circuit breakers can carry and withstand the fault current at the point of origin. So in other words, if there was a fault here in the position where it had its lowest impedance, therefore the maximum amount of fault current, can the overcurrent protection device clear that fault without causing potentially the overcurrent protection device, in this case, to arc across and continue to carry current or destroy the circuit breaker. So again, it arcs across and continues to work. So we need to see if that fault current can be cleared under fault conditions by taking a measurement. The fault current that can be withstand from the cutout fuse depends on its type. We've got a BS1361 type two fuse in this installation. However, it could be, and stated on the side here, we've got a BS88 type two fuse, and the current that they can withstand under fault conditions is different. You need to look in BS7671 for confirmation. The fuse here in our cutout can withstand fault currents up to 33kA. This one here, the BS88, can go up to 31.5kA. And our overcurrent protection devices in this installation are up to 6kA. So that's the amount of fault current they can withstand, but it needs to be measured in order to prove that it can withstand that fault current at the origin itself. So we're going to carry out that test. Before we start the test, obviously, we're going to need to isolate the consumer unit and remove the cover. Isolation from the main double pole switch or linked main switch here and as always I do it off load So turn off the individual circuit breakers for the installation the RCDs as well And now we can turn the main switch off Off load we can remove the cover and then re-energize the circuit in order to carry out the PFC test the prospective fault current test we're going to take several PFC readings from inside the consumer's unit, one for the incoming cutout and one for the overcurrent protection devices. We're going to do both short circuit, so if we were doing the one for the incoming fuse between the top here of the tails, we're going to do between line and neutral, and we're going to do between line and earth for the prospective earth fault current, noting down the higher of the two readings. We're going to repeat the process on top of a circuit breaker, going between line and neutral bar, for short circuit and line and earth bar for prospective earth fault current. Again, noting the highest of the two readings. Remembering we can't exceed a fault current of 33 kA or 33,000 amps for the overcurrent protection device in this installation. And these are six kA breakers, therefore we cannot exceed 6,000 amps above the top of the circuit breaker. Let's make those measurements. So I've removed the consumer unit cover and I'm now ready to do my test. First of all, we'll test between line and neutral at the top of the linked main or double pole switch for a short circuit, and then between line and the earth bar for the earth fault, recording the highest of the two readings. MFT needs to be set down into, first of all, loop between line and neutral. And as we go in between line and neutral for a loop test, we need it in the red and blue sections at the top. As always, I'm gonna probe on the least dangerous conductor first being neutral, then line, off the line and off the neutral, and then repeat the process between line and the earth bar. The consumer's unit can now be energized and I can probe on for the test. So neutral first, followed by line. I'm looking at the reading at the top of the machine being 312 amps off the line and off the neutral. I now need to move my lead down one into the green section and move it up to do a, a test between line and protective earth. And again, I'm gonna go on the least dangerous one first. Let's just change it back to two lead two lead high. So we're gonna go between line and earth bar, probing on the least dangerous first, in the earth bar, and then the line bar itself. Reading 424 amps. Take it off the line bar and off the earth bar. So we're gonna record the highest of those two readings, which was a perspective earth fault current of 424 amps. 
often it is higher between the um, line and earth because you'll have things such as the bonding conductors to extraneous conductive parts such as water, gas, oil and framework of the building. However, you do record the highest one, whichever it is. In this case, it was between line and the protective conductor. It also was considerably less than the maximum of 33,000 amps for the incoming fuse. So we're satisfied that part of the test. We'll now go on and do a test on the top of the circuit breaker next. So I've reset my instrument back between line and neutral and moved my probe into the blue section at the top of the instrument. Turn on my RCCB and turn on the circuit breaker under test. It wouldn't matter which of the circuit breakers we selected. Probe on again, the least dangerous first, being neutral, onto the top of the line. And we've got 332 amps off the line and then off the neutral. Set it round between now line and protective earth. Move across my probe, but this time I'm gonna to need to be in the low setting because I have got my RCCB in circuit. So again, earth connection first, followed by the top of the line. Takes a moment. We've got 311. So we can see this time the higher reading was between the line and neutral, and that's the one that we'll need to make a mental note of. These overcurrent protection devices have a 6,000 amp braking capacity, and we're nowhere near even 400 amps with our tests, so obviously they're acceptable. We will talk about the serviceable rating of the devices as we move through the classroom. So we've managed to carry out the prospective fault current at the top of the switch, and the switch to the earth connection, top of the breaker between neutral and earth, in order to prove that both can handle the current under fault conditions. In this case, we're making sure the, the incoming supply fuse can handle anything up to 33,000 amps, we were considerably less, and the circuit breakers themselves can handle anything up to 6,000 amps, and again, we were considerably less. So we've carried out the prospective fault current at the origin of the installation,